Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 23 hours and uh, 56 minutes into the uh, first day of November. So right on the cusp of, uh, of November 2nd, let me blow my nose here. It's a little chilly out here. It's about 42 degrees, 40, 42 degrees Fahrenheit. <sighs> and I'll say this once again. I don't say it too often, but I prefer the Fahrenheit for personal uh, understanding of uh, temperature for human beings. I use Celsius for chemistry, and then when you're dealing with physics, you're dealing with temperatures uh, on the corona, on the sun, or you're going into um, absolute zero physics, uh, you're dealing with Calvin. So there are different temperature scales, and you use them accordingly. You know, it depends on how you, your experience is with uh, the environment that you're uh, sort of investigating. You start off general, and then you start uh, whittling the uh, the. Uh, basically, the general is you're getting your first feel for things. Once you get enough feel, uh, you pick up enough pieces uh, to start putting something together. This becomes your framework that you can now focus more. Uh, you can develop a better focus. And yeah, my finger's better. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that uh, I did my bit for Lionel, and I, I did uh, uh, one other person is uh, Max Kaiser. I, off, I, I often watch him sometimes. Uh, and not as, not as much as I want, watch Lionel, but I watch him enough that... Uh, because he has, on occasion, he has very interesting characters on in terms of uh, their discussion on the financial markets. And this is sort of where it sort of leads into today's discussion, today's uh, observational work, uh, where we're talking about works, we're talking about LARP, because the works and LARPs are the same thing. Uh, for those who don't understand, a LARP is a live action role play. So a work is your wrestling, uh, your wrestling bit, how the re wrestling scripted out. And I bring in the term improv because in many cases, even though a work is scripted, if your actors, and this is what happens with agents and blind agents as compared to control, if a control sees that an agent is good enough to improv, to do things on their own without being scripted, the control will allow the agent to go rogue without acknowledging that this is the intent to have the person go rogue, even though you know the person's capable of going rogue. And the thing is, it's, it, it, the ro term rogue, which is not a good term in terms of its uh, overall functionality, the use of the word, it does uh, display a bit of sort of called independence. It, it comes negative. But it can be turned around and say, well, the person, like, because the, the opposite the, the, the description of rogue, because rogue is bad, the positive or, or the, the term of rogue would be maverick. Maverick and rogue are the same thing. It just really depends on your perspective. If the person does something good, he's a maverick. Right? On his own, unscripted, he's a maverick. If he does something bad, unscripted, you know, oh, he's a rogue. We, we, we had no idea that he would do this uh, type of thing. You know, he went rogue on us. <laughs> uh, so what happens is that the rogue and maverick really depends on, on where you are. This is also the term improv from improv improv improvisation. Uh, I always, I still do have sometimes uh, difficulty tripping over those words and so. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like, I, I think it's I think it's sort of uh, being able to wrap your mind around it at the time. I said it's, it's just about midnight now, and was, I've been sitting out here for close to uh, well, it's about ten o'clock. But I've been out here for about two hours, and it does sitting out here just sort of you know reading or, or listening to the talk shows. 
Uh, and that's what Lionel and, and Max are, they're these talk shows. Uh, it gets... Uh, it gets uh, fat- it becomes fatiguing, particularly if you do this day after day. But the thing is, the nature of QLARP, which is to be uh, within the uh, environment of uh, the other LARPs like Davos and so on and so forth, uh, in other words, taking LARP out of the fantasy role play and bringing it into the real world, which you see, I say Davos, uh, uh, what's going on in Glasgow with the uh, international pi- uh, international uh, panel for climate change. That's you know they have, they're in Glasgow. There they're going to have all that security. And to understand where I fit into all this, because you do have to bring in uh, your own perspective in terms of defining it, uh, because you have well, people need to know where you are and how you how you how you see the situation. Lyle does occasionally tell us that he's an independent, but. Uh, you can compare them with a lot of other different things as well. An independent does not does not necessarily denote independent. You could be independent leaning. It could be a, a liberal independent leaning, left in, uh, independent leaving. Uh, you could be a rightist independent leaving. You know, you could be a Republican independent leaning. You know, you could be the independent. Uh, independent is very loosely defined, and in the sort of this is what you can see in Max Kaiser. So is the left. The left is is is, is the definition of what you mean left uh, really depends on the person's perspective. So you can't say that a person isn't left, or you can't say something, you know, oh, this is Marx. Well, okay, you know, I don't have an issue with it because that's the person's personality. I don't take it. Oh, that is Marxist. I said, well, this is his his perspective. I'm going to go and seek other perspectives uh, that say, maybe don't say that they're Marxist. Well, what are they saying? What, what are they bringing forward as their argument? Are they just simply tossing out a label? Oh, that person's Marxist, or that thing is Marxist, or that whole event is Marxist? If they're just simply tossing out a label, then that's as far as it goes. All they've given you is a label. They haven't given you any substance. And I think that Max Kaiser, to uh, to to his credit, actually brings in a lot. brings in a lot of substance. Uh, today, actually, I was surprised that the lineup brought in near the end, uh, a fair amount of substance, and it was this focus on the Catholic Church uh, that really sort of uh, hit the nail on the head type of thing. Uh, but again, there was a lot he missed. So let's go with my qualification, my my, my perspective, identifying my perspective. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a non-violent, and I have to say this, I'm anti-establishment. I don't support establishment. I'm an individualist to the point where I don't support establishment. And that makes me anti-establishment. I don't like taking orders. I don't conform to anything. I've never conformed to any particular group or thing. I've always done something wrong or I don't conform to what is called every group, no matter how outcast they may be, or no matter how alternative they may be, always has a code of conduct, a code of behavior, a code of uh, dress and, and and so on and so forth. And if you don't conform I, exactly to their means and measure, then you're often tossed out because, well, she's not really, you know. And that, that was always part of my problem is that, you know, well, I liked hard rock. I liked, you know, you know The Who. I liked Rolling Stones and uh, you know, ACDC, yay for that. But I also like the BGs. I also like the, uh, uh, you know, um, I also like funk. You know, back when I was younger in the 1970s, and this is what Max Kaiser was talking about, it, and they're saying that the 1970s is coming back again. This is with the, you know, the, the uh, open prostitution laws. Well, this is what's happening: is, is, is the 1970s is coming back, and as it, it, the cycles repeat themselves. And the thing is, is that oh, I lost my train of thought there for a bit. There, oh yeah, the radio stations. And this is, has to do with a BLM and the whole issue of Black Lives Matter. If things are systemic racism, and this is where it is, and this is what I was sort of talking about, uh. You want to look, look back into history and see where it was. And, and where it was in the 1970s was 
uh, that you couldn't have. You had channels on the air that were only could all, primarily be only white, and only a certain amount of what called black music was allowed to play on there. Well, funk was black music, so a large chunk of funk didn't get on to what called the uh, top forty, the top forty stuff. It had to be popular, it had to be top forty. It had to fit a partic- particular format. But the thing is, uh, most of the can- Canadian stuff was all white. You couldn't get an alternative channel, channel in Canada because the government prevented it. All radio channels and stuff like that had to be, in many cases, an act of parliament. Uh, it had to be approved by the government. They had a, the uh, uh, Canadian Radio uh, Radio and Tele- Television Commission, and, you know, CRTC. Uh, I call it the Canadian Restricted Thought Council. Uh, because that's what it was. It determined what you could and couldn't see because, you know, it's not properly Canadian. <laughs> uh But we were within, this was the days of radio. And the antenna, the, the, the transmitters were powerful enough from Buffalo that you can get uh, the radio station from Buffalo. It was called WBLK. It was the, uh, the black channel. And you can get a large chunk of funk and R&B. And this is the stuff, but this is Al Green. This is uh, Barry White. You, this, was, this, was when the, this is that time of day. This was... Uh, uh, which was again, again, Sly, Sly and the Family Stone. That was my favorite, I think. Uh, that was my favorite. Uh, and so I sort of, I kind of went more. Oh, you could have a certain amount of funk in your, in your, in your, in your rock, rock, rock thing, if you, if, if, but you had to be sort of uh, somewhat on the margins. And I kind of was on the margins, but I wasn't typically on the margins of rock. I was expected to be in the hardcore, but oh, and, and, it, and it, so it's all rock and nothing else. But I liked, uh, I liked, <laughs> I liked uh, Sly and the Family Stone. I liked their stuff. Uh, I was introduced, ironically enough, from a kids' TV show called Hilarious House of Frankenstein, and there was this DJ on there called the Wolfman. This because this was in the heyday of Wolfman Jack, the real, uh, the DJ. And so this this guy, this character was the, was the, sort of the image of that. He was in a uh, a, a, a horror series type of thing. So you had the Wolf Man, you, that, uh, and he was DJ. You had uh, Dracula. He had Frankenstein. You had the whole the whole cast of characters were there, uh, and it was in the DJ Wolf Man Jack who was was the Wolf Man. Uh, he was playing Sly and the Family Stone, and I, that's something I really sort of enjoyed as a kid. And it sort of kept forward to the today. I still do go back and listen to Sly and the Family Stone. And the, the environment really does shape you. And the thing is, you do have to know, have a sense of history. And this is what BLM sort of kind of lacks. And this is where we're going to get into uh, the whole work of BLM and, work, and even in Antifa, where, where we talked uh, last night about uh, targeting and assessing your target. You do have to do an enormous amount of work to really get an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. Or you could be doing a lot of damage to your own self. BLM and Antifa are a massive failure. They didn't decrease racism. They didn't decrease or eliminate the establishment. They gave it the reason to be, the reason for existence. What's going on right now is they're, as these Antifa groups are planning to hit uh, Glasgow with their protest with the international, uh, with the uh, uh, called the Eco Warrior uh, Group. Uh, well, what's happening? They, they've, they've turned these people into warriors, and so now the the, the establishment, establishment has popped up and said, "Well, okay, yeah, these people are violent, and it's obvious that they're violent, it's, even though they call call it protest. Their protest is uh, postmodern. It's deconstruction. It is within the line of uh, anarchy. It, this is what an anarchist does. An anarchist is the person who deconstructs, who destroys." The establishment, and so what happens is that this gives the the establishment reason to say, "Hey, look, these people are a danger. They're they're a security risk. We need to increase our security." In other words, they need to increase the police state. And this is what's going on now. The police state is being increased. It's being uh, uh, evolved to the next generation, and this is in many cases. Uh, the, this is in, in contrast 
to what BLM and Antifa set out to do, which is to remove, to be anti-fascist. But the thing is, they're actually promoting fascism, they're promoting the police state, because they give the police state, they give the, the fascists the reason to create the security state that they want. And this is why I say tar- targeting is important. You have to know who to hit. Well, they hit a street in Portland, they hit a street in Seattle, they hit sometimes down uh, downtown New York, but where didn't they hit? And if you did a peaceful protest in Anaheim, that's at the core of Disney, because Disney has been hugely involved all over the world in slavery. We saw this is why I brought up this is why I brought up WBLK. You had the Canadian government. This is under this was then, then uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, uh, Justin Trudeau's father, who wouldn't allow black channels to open up in Canada. And there were companies, they were corporations. BlackRock Capital was there, part of uh, part of Chum FM, part of the CRTC, the part of the radio landscape that was Canada. A large chunk was BlackRock Capital, and this is what Max Kaiser was talking about. But, but, but a large chunk of these multi-billion-dollar corporations, what are they doing? They're going in, and they are uh, <laughs> they're buying up plants. They're creating the shortages, the, the supply chain shortages, and we're going into a uh, we're going into a massive uh, economic collapse. We're going back to the 70s, back to the inflation of the 70s, back to the economic economic conditions of the 70s. And the thing is, instead of improving things, Antifa and BLM made it worse. It was a systemic racism that was the problem with police officers. If you look very carefully, go back to the 1970s, You'll see that there's that there's a person named Dr. Philip Zimbardo. There is the Stanford Prison Experiment, and you can see right there the whole issue of BLM, Black Lives Matter, in terms of the police abuse. It's right there. They've known about this for the whole time. So who do you hit? You don't hit the president because the president doesn't control the police. The governor doesn't control the police. Who does control the police? The mayor does. This is a mayoral issue. This is a Municipal issue. The police are a municipal issue. You want to hit the right target for the BLM's issue? You hit the mayor. You hit the municipal. This is where you hit. But they didn't do that. They were steered. They were engineered. This they, they were herded in the framework of of uh, in the framework of Edward Bernays and herding the cattle, herding the, the bewildered herd. Uh, they were herded into the political the, the political arena of the federal election, where the whole issue of BLM, the, the, what was going on in the streets of Chicago, had nothing to do, and the black experience in, in terms of where, what, how, how they were experiencing the police, that had nothing to do with the president. I said it's a municipal issue. It has to do with the mayor. It, it's a municipal issue, it's not and not a federal issue. Completely missed the target. Antifa did the same thing. They were trying, you know, trying to support this group and that group, and again, they completely missed it. So what you had, instead of having a targeted, uh, a targeted approach to how you were going to achieve your specific goals in terms of a political environment or, or how the world is going to behave, they kind of destroyed everything. There was nothing left for anyone to sort of really deal with. And so th- this is how it ended up. It, it ends up that, that their target assessment was way off because in many cases I don't think that they were the target assessments were actually there to be anyway. They were a control group. There was a there was a con- control element in there, and I saw this. I was watching this, uh, and the one of them came over on Twitter, not on the mainstream media, where they had federal agents coming in and pulling people away. My first suspicion was, and th- th- this was later confirmed, a large chunk of the people they pulled away that they that, that these well, marshals had taken into, into custody, uh, uh, these people into custody, they weren't average people. They were they were federal agents. The federal agencies now are fully embedded with almost every single crime group you can imagine. They're embedded in most of the political organizations. This includes this includes Amnesty International. What, they, what these groups have to understand is that they've now been so infiltrated with these different agencies 
that you're having people in there who are designed, who are being pushed, who are pushing you into actions that you would not normally do in order for them to make a buck and make themselves look good. And of course, for the political higher ups, it's again, it has to do with certain degrees of politics. It creates a political adva advantage. You are becoming you become a tool of the establishment. Let's, let's put it this way: you're becoming a tool of the a tool of the establishment. The federal agents in there are controlled. They're getting you to do things that the that the that the establishment wants you to do. And then the, the establishment is not one thing again. This is it. Just like the shadow government is one thing. The establishment, the shadow government, they're all a lot of different entities. So each one has very different uh, understandings, different points of view, and different uh, concepts that they want to see evolve. Just check the time here. As part of uh, their reality. They, this is how they want to shape or engineer the world. And it's not necessarily correct. I think more often than not, it's not correct because why? They have people like at Davos, where you look at the, the, the stuff at Davos, uh, you can see that it's, it's primary in, in the World Economic Forum. You can, you can, see, you can see that a large chunk of this stuff is simply a, a war game. Go, go, to any, go to any website for, the, for a policy think tank or a policy meeting. What is it? It's a lot. It's live action role play. These people are creating scenarios in which they will succeed. How do you solve a particular problem? Again, there's a scenario, a LARP, uh, live action role play, that is there to solve a problem. And it's all these people coming out of Yale, Harvard, and so on and so forth, all these Ivy League schools with their professors creating these sort of the, aiming for the socialist utopia. They want to create heaven on earth. This is going to be the perfect city. Nothing's going to go wrong. Well, hate, hate, hate to burst your bubble, but a lot has gone wrong. Anyways, uh, I think uh, we're going to leave that here for tonight. I think that's going to be it. Uh, <laughs> I think you, you, you can take the skills that you use here. And I, I took my skills from astronomy and physics brought, and put them into uh, atmospheric physics and, and uh, acoustical physics. And now I'm applying them to, let's call it, uh, Metaphysics or psychological physics, <laughs> the physics of the mind, of how the, the, the physics, of the, 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 the me mechanism of behavior, and that's what politics is. Me politics in what you see in a large, a large chunk of the world, what you see with Lionel and all these other people on TV and so on and so forth. This is, this is uh, uh, the mechanics of behavior. You can, you can observe this and develop. Uh, if your observational skills are good enough, you can understand what so you can begin to understand what's going on. And the more you do this, the more you'll understand. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it. I said that is going to be it for now. And I will see you uh, tomorrow night uh, for another observation vlog. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen and Middle School for Life.